Good day. We had absolutely torrential rain last night. That's Monday evening. For about six hours, it didn't seem to ease off at all or hardly at all. I mean, it was raining heavily throughout and it was raining very heavily for quite a chunk of that time. But of course, despite that, these lettuce and seedlings and other plants that we've got in the poly and the greenhouse, they're not going to get any of that water from the skies. So of course, I needed to come down this morning after about three, four hours at my desk and just give these a little water. And you can see on the right that those lettuce are really beginning to grow now, which is fab. Let's also have a look at the ones outside and see how they're doing. Before we get there, look at the water. I mean, literally, it's full to overflowing. And these were emptied yesterday. So it just shows you we had over three inches of rain last night. I'd say well over three inches. And the lettuce, if we come around here, has enjoyed that rain. You can see that some are really beginning to bolt now, which is them going to flower, which is what they naturally do. But the water has really sort of encouraged them along. Fortunately, we've still got a good few weeks of picking of these. These will start, the ones that are bolting will start to get a bit more bitter, but that's not an issue for us. We quite like bitter leaves. That's why we sow quite a lot of bitter leaves um, or have done in the past. Maybe not so much this year. Yeah, as they bolt, they get bitter, but we've got many weeks of picking here. And I decided that I'd also pick a few beetroot today. And look what I found. One of our Dichiogia beetroot has been munched by slugs or snails or something. Fortunately, it's just that one. So I'll be able to take this one here and this one here, which I'll do later. And I think I'll be down later to do some harvesting of our chard as well oh there's an interesting oh no he's flown away i was going to say there's an interesting pollinator not sure what it was it was a different type of of bee there's a lot of chatter on yesterday's upload of a week at the plot about pollinators and i'll i'll put a link in below to a professor from a i think it was from a surrey university who said why we might not be getting quite so many at the moment. I do just generally feel that pollinators are down, even on a cooler day, which this is at the moment, I'd expect more than on here, this lavender, I mean. Anyway, let's see if I can find some pollinators for next year. Can you see in here these caterpillars? These are cinnabar caterpillars. Can you see here these little caterpillars? There's a larger one in there. If I come over here, can you see these at the top? Will it focus? Oh, that one fell off. But these have been munching on this ragwort. It's, it's what they do. It's their favourite thing. And, uh, of course, they're camouflaged with their... their orange and black. So, are not eaten. And these will... These are cinnabar moth caterpillars. There's one up there. You see that? 
and these are going to produce cinnabar moths which are the red and black ones they'll fall to the ground and then over winter and then come up as moths next year so there are pollinators for next year and some of them may have pollinated some of these I haven't done a picking yet of our blueberries but you can see we've got quite a few to pick which is rather welcoming this year a bit of a closer look at our tomato and bean bed I underplanted the tomatoes there's actually a calendula in there but I underplanted the tomatoes with bush beans but the bush beans are growing rather a lot this must be about at least 40 centimeters now and the tomatoes are not so we do have you can see there we do have flowers on them I can't see any fruit developing at the moment oh no there is one look can you see in there there is one so there's a few fruit developing but nowhere nowhere near the height that I would normally expect and I underplanted the tomatoes with bush beans because I thought the tomatoes would be about five foot by now certainly four foot if not five foot if not taller and they just aren't and these are our own seeds that we sowed we've got some more tomatoes over here this side but these mainly came from the gate sale so one would expect them to be a little bit slower but over here I was hoping these would be well up but they're not and of course with damp weather maybe in a few weeks time we might be seeing issues with the B word and the airflow in between these tomatoes because of me underplanting them with the beans and also because they haven't grown at the rate that they have grown at in previous years the airflow between these is going to be really minimal so any bee that might come onto the site here will I think grab hold here pretty swiftly. I'm hoping to be back this afternoon and to do a little bit of tomato cares and also I can see some fat hen um, where have I seen some fat hen there's some fat hen here and there's some fat hen just up here so taking some weeds out and taking side shoots out and hopefully <coughs> excuse me hopefully that will help a little bit but look that is a looking across at our our plot which ends with this sort of blue band and then but behind is the previous tenants carrots going to flower which the current tenant has left because they just look lovely and then that's a fruit line and then there's another plot behind that fruit line oh it does look lovely it does look lovely despite if we look over here everyone always says how my plot looks lovely but you know this is the reality of it that bed on the left of the marjoram where the sunflowers are needs a complete weed and the bed where the broad beans were on the the right towards those compost bags that needs a complete weed and i want to plant that up with beetroot as well but yeah maybe later this week maybe later this week I'm just wondering if we can get around to that butterfly. Look. Look, there's several butterflies. There's one there. Look. As if to prove a point, they're dancing around. 
you know the difference sorry you know a butterfly because it rests with its wings closed like this one at the top is resting with its wings closed as this with as is this one where a moth I believe rests with its wings out oh what's that that see there's so many different this is can we go in here can I get that That's a fat legged something. It's emerald in colour. But yeah, there's lots of different types of pollinators. They're just not sort of large in number. Anyway, I need to get back to my desk. But I might just watch the honeybees and other pollinators here for a minute or two. See you very soon. Bye. Good day. It's Friday afternoon, the hottest day of the year so far. And of course we have relatively high humidity as well, which makes that temperature feel even worse than it is, even higher than it is. Though of course we do have a lovely breeze today, which brings the sort of relative heat index for your body down a little bit and I've had a, a full day at my desk and wanted to get down here to sow some seeds which I have done I was going to do a whole bed here of chard this is rhubarb chard or pink chard that I've put in but I decided actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to put or I have sown down the middle the rhubarb chard and then on either side I'm going to sow some turnips I think or maybe beetroot I think turnips we haven't really sown any turnips direct this year so I think I'll sow some of those tomorrow I didn't bring those down with me today so I won't sow them today we've got some nigella you can most probably see at the side I'm pointing at it but you can't see my finger I need to get pointy stick out some nigella stroke love in the mist which is flowering and others that is going to seed so I'm going to be collecting some of that seed to put onto the bed on the right because that is going to be just flowers next year I'm also well you can see that this bed the edges of this bed are falling apart the left hand side has fallen apart and I've taken it away and I'm mulling whether I have this as a ground bed rather than an edge bed. To be frank, it's already doing my OCD head in on its untidiness, but I'm wondering if I can get over that. I guess a good strim might help. But yeah, that will have to wait for another day. So I've just come down briefly today to do that sowing of that rhubarb stroke pink chard and ponder what else is going to happen with this bed. What I will be doing is a little bit more weeding and a little bit more pondering 
on whether I do get some more wood and edge it or whether I just give in to my OCD and see how I cope with it. I sort of feel that's the better option because actually the side on the right hand side here is also beginning to go so I think it's sensible to see if I can get away with this being a ground bed rather than an edge bed. Time will tell. And now I'm going to go home and have a glass of wine. See you very soon. Bye. Good day. It's Saturday morning about 10 o'clock and it's certainly rather a different day today than it was yesterday. It's much much cooler today. I think at least 10 degrees cooler at the moment. I mean it feels quite cool where yesterday was feeling rather hot. But of course that means that I can just get on and do things. So that's what I'm going to do. They do say fair exchange is no robbery, which of course is part of the barter system, I suppose. And those lettuce were going to seed. So they were bolting. So they're, they're sort of growing in the stem and then they would come to flower and set seed. And I would harvest that if I was going to be keeping the seed. But I'm not going to be keeping the seed of those this year. Well, the green one, I think I'm going to do the green one, as I've said before, but not the, the red ones. So I decided, as my fellow plotter, who you met very briefly when we did the gate sale that morning, Jackie, she's got chickens. And I thought, oh, I'll give her the lettuce so that she can put that with her chickens and her chickens can enjoy pecking away at the lettuce not just the vegetation but also any grubs that might be in the roots they will enjoy and of course what do I get in exchange I say of course I wasn't expecting to I'm just gifting them eggs so um, that's lovely so we're gonna have some scrambled eggs I think for lunch today which will be rather lovely, lovely, lovely. Yesterday I sowed the chard. I called it rhubarb chard. It's not actually rhubarb chard. It is pink chard. It's, it's flamingo chard, I think, was what was on the packet. So that was sown yesterday, and I said I was going to do turnips on either side. I looked for my turnip seed. There is no turnip seed in my box, apart from... In the fridge turnip seed that I harvested as save seed last year June last year so yes of course I'm going to be sowing this and I'm going to be doing exactly the same as I did yesterday with the chard I'm going to be making a little drill on either side of where I've sown the chard thinly sowing and you can most probably see maybe you can't they're very very small seeds thinly sowing these seeds and then covering up like I did with the chard and then giving a good water I'm already looking at the edging and it's already sort of <laughs> getting to me but I'm going to go with it I'm going to go with it because these beds on this side they are two years older than the beds on that side because I got this side of the plot first so these are older beds and what have they lasted I came here in 2016 I think gosh that's going to it's gonna be no it can't be eight years I think it's eight years I've been have I been here eight years I mean, it will be eight years in sort of October. I'm going to have to check that out. But yeah, anyway, yeah. So these are older beds, so it's not surprising that they're beginning to to fail. So yeah. Anyway, I'm going to sow those seeds. I'm not going to 
show you me doing that because you saw what I did yesterday with the chard and I'm just going to potter the weather's fine for pottering and I'm going to potter and I'll take you round with me whilst I get on and do a few jobs. I just came to put something in the compost and as I lifted this up I noticed can I move that out? Let me move that out. Can you see here? Slow worm. Not sure if you can see it moving. But yeah, this obviously is open to the ground. Um, it does have a membrane at the base, but it's completely open so that creatures can get in here because slow worms and things like that they they help break down your compost too so yeah little slow worm happily living in the compost yay As you can see, it's a little matter of rain stops play. It's been threatening to rain from relatively early morning and been quite humid despite the, the cooler weather. But I thought I would just get away with it and we'd get it later on this afternoon, but how wrong I am. I have been able to sow the turnips so they're sown and watered which is great because this water from the skies will help both them and the chard germinate. I also took the nigella seed pods that were drying and I put them to one side. Stupidly they're outside. I need to get them in and put them here so that they dry off and any water that's in there already I need to tip out. We did the end bed here just cutting back the fever few taking out weeds and in doing that I can see how really decrepit this side of the wood of that bed is as well or the wood on this side of the bed rather. Um, 
I've also taken out the leaks that had gone to seed and have left a few in just for pollinators and the others I've just put to one side I'm not putting them putting them in the compost bin now I've put them to one side because they'll still be pollen and nice things for bees and other pollinators to go on to those for another you know maybe 12 24 hours that's if they can um you know get on with this rain it's drizzle now it stopped raining it's now drizzle and i've sown beetroot i've sown beetroot so i sowed a d well a golden beetroot on the far end of that bed and i sowed d Chiogia on this side of the bed it's sort of the last chance to sow beetroot now there is some further sowing i want to do in fact i've got it in my pocket here and that's of, of parsley. I'm going to do curly leaf parsley simply because I've got this seed in this packet and it says pack year at pack packed year ending 2015. So by June 2018. So I'm going to sow some and see whether we get any germination from those. And yeah, despite it not being raining, it's now drizzling. So I think I'm going to call it a day for today. And in fact, I think I'm going to call it a day for this week's a week at the plot. I'm just going to be carrot. Well, as long as the weather allows, I've got my tea. As long as the weather allows, I'm just going to be continuing weeding and tidying. I've been thinking about this bed to the right, as I look out, to the right of the polytunnel, which I've had covered in cardboard and other things, weighting the cardboard down. And I'm wondering how many slugs there are living underneath that cardboard. I mean, it's, an, it's interesting, and I've talked about this before. Other people seem to be able to use cardboard almost as a mulch. I know Vivi has done with her squash and... Uh, her squash and I think cucumbers and a few other things. But she's put cardboard down and made a hole in the cardboard and planted through the cardboard. And that obviously keeps weeds down, it keeps the moisture in, and as long as you've got a sort of bottle, upturned bottle, you can easily water down the, the, the body of the bottle so that it goes through the neck and into the ground. And Vivi's done it quite successfully. Each time I've gone to use cardboard as a, as a sort of collar or a mulch, I've found that everything I've, I've sown through it, or planted through it rather, has been eaten by slugs and snails. And I'm talking about previous years. I'm not talking about this year, which has been a mega year for slugs and snails. I'm sure if I go out there now, they will have gone, oh, we've heard that pitter-patter of lovely raindrops, so we will get out and about and start munching things. But yeah, so I'm sure there must be lots of slugs, and I'm wondering if the slugs there are moving over or whether they did move over and they munched on the courgettes and the cucumbers in this bed in front of me. I don't know. I don't know. It seems to me, who, who mentioned it? Somebody did mention about getting uh, Indian runner ducks, which are used very often in closed spaces for weed control, but particularly pest control, because of course they, they love eating slugs and snails and that type of thing. And I mean, it, you know, it's a lovely idea if you've got an enclosed area and you can do that. And I certainly know of one community garden in Wales that does use Indian runner ducks in that way. There's a turkey there as well. I'm not sure they use the turkey in that way, but yeah, they, the, un, the Indian runner ducks they do. And of course, we can't use anything like that here because we're not fenced in. Our plot isn't fenced in, so anything can easily run onto another plot and, you know, right to the bottom of the site, onto a plot at the bottom of the site. And secondly, we've got foxes, so... India runner ducks and foxes, they don't really mix. Excuse me, I've got itchy nose. They don't really mix. 
and then of course we're bordered by a river as well so if we did have them they might sort of take to the river and decide to depart and go down to the Thames and travel onwards to who knows where who knows where so yeah lovely idea but but certainly not for here not for here ah oh, there we are there we are so look I've done a few jobs today not as many as I'm hoping that it does seem to be easing off the drizzle seems to be easing off now so maybe it's not going to be in for the whole day I had hoped I would be streaming today but with this rain that we've had and with the drizzle that's not going to happen I think the sun is trying to break through but we are forecast a cloudy showery day and I think that's going to be the same on Sunday and on Monday so I'll just be down pottering and doing things not a huge amount of things the things that I've taken out the weeds that I've taken out those will be going into our or the not chamomile fever few will be going into our general compost bin where we saw the slow worm earlier and the, the other grassy ones will be going into our perennial weed bin which is next to that compost bin and I think it's just going to be a matter of pottering around and doing things like that yeah and I think next week we're going to be harvesting potatoes so I will see you then for that right I am going to leave it here for this week's a week at the plot any comments any questions please do leave them down below do let us know how you're getting on in your garden your growing space or your allotment and whatever is happening in those spaces I hope you're taking some time to enjoy things finding those moments of joy like the buddleia outside this poly here which is so dark and glorious just bouncing in the breeze looks absolutely lovely right see you again soon happy growing bye